Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel, my name is Cordam and we are back for some more Baldur's Gate 2. In the last episode we were dealing tell me, did Goriah with tell Vaconia you apparently. So I'll get to Vaconia in a bit. Uh, we were finishing Furcrack stuff, we dealt with Edwin's quest, so he is no longer Edwina. Is now back to being a man. Um, and our current plan is to actually go and check out the Planner Sphere at this point. And for that, we need Mr. Valigar. So we're gonna speak to him soon. And Vaconia is flirting with me. So did Gorion mention Underdark? He told a few tales, but not many. Tell me of those, the, these races if you wish to. Hmm, I am sure you have heard of the revolting Illithids. Oh, I love Illithids. <laughs> I understand on the surface they are referred to as Mind Flayers, an apt name for devourers of the mind. They are strange specimens with an empire as mighty as the Drow. We forge treaties, but a single thought can bring their collapse when dealing with the Psionics. Negotiations with them are fraught with peril, as they would prefer you as a square meal rather than an ambassador of goodwill. The thing that strikes you on your first meeting is the eyes. Blank, roomy, white and unblinking. And the four tentacles that dangle and twitch over ugh, a lamprey's mouth. Their skulls are striated like a contour of a man's brain, but it pulses like a sheep's bladder. The illithid mind is a stranger landscape still. Their main goal is dominance of others, and they believe that life with the elder brain is the highest form of being. That, and the delight they seem to get from cracking open your skull like a hen's egg and drinking everything swimming inside your head. Mmm, lovely. What else can you tell me? The Quotoa are a race of fishmen that form the other third of the Underdark civilized domains. Oh, civilized. Cold, horrid creatures driven into the underground seas long ago. They are usually on good terms with Drow, but they hate us, as they loathe most everything. They despise sunlight and the surface dwellers that drove them from it. The Kotoa will trade, but negotiations are fraught with danger. No one Kotoan settlement is the same as the next. They are unstable and prone to profound suspicion. I've seen them swim across Lake... Oh God... Tresnredneth, cresting and leaping. They appear to enjoy themselves. The speed was amazing, easily a Corsair's character at full sail. The first sign of Kotoa is the reek of dead fish. Head away from the water they need to survive. Risking a fight is to flirt with a cold maiden. Hmm. Wow, you could write a bestiary, I think. Bah. These things are known to all drow easily. I am sure there is equally much you could tell me about surface creatures. <clears throat> quite right, quite right. Vaconia is correct. Execute order 66. It's actually interesting. I like the, um, the races of the Underdark, especially the Illithid. They are one of the most dangerous enemies in the game, but one of my favorite ones as well. Okay, by the way, how much gold do I have? 54,000... Not yet. Okay, so we are gonna pick up Mr... Valigar, where is he? He's in the Umar Hills, right? I believe so. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so let's go over here. Let, let's also speed this up a bit. There's no point in us going slowly here. Okay. It's And we are going to be very friendly and speak to Mr. Valigar and try to convince him to come with us and help us on our quest. Because we are nice people. Palpatine is a good person. Ah, I see you have tracked me down here. Have you changed your mind regarding my proposal? No, but I have changed my mind about bringing your body to the cold wizards. Bastard and traitor, as you wish. 
you'll not find Valagar a sitting target. <laughs> we'll see about that, sir. I'm kind of close to him. No, I don't like that. Let's what just... Is it now? Nukovic here. Uh huh. Yes, yes. Cast your spell. So, <laughs> our friend Mr. Valigar had some cool stuff. He has a Cortala family armor. This is stuff that comes with him. This armor, long in the Cortala bloodline, protects the user against all form of attacks. The armor is enchanted so that it grants a plus 3 to Valigar's armor class. It also adds a bonus to resisting acid, fire and magical damage. The armor also makes Valigar immune to charm while he wears it. As it is specifically fitted for Valigar, only he may wear it. So it's actually a cool armor. Immunity to charm, resistances, especially magic resistance. An armor class of 2, which is very very good. And I think you can stealth with it. So that's one. You also have the Cortala family blade. This fine katana radiates magical energy when wielded by Valigar. The blade was designed to respond only to those with the blood of the family Cortala flowing through their veins. This plus two blade causes additional bleeding damage when it strikes an opponent. Okay. So it has an armor class of plus two versus slashing attacks. Cool. And hit target suffers three points of additional bleeding damage per round for two rounds. So cool for interrupting, let's say, any kind of spellcaster. Let's take it as well. And finally we have Valigar's body. <laughs> now, I'm not gonna deliver him to the Cowled Wizards. <clears throat> I actually wanna see what's inside the Planet Sphere Execute for myself. 66. Good. We are st oh, I can I leave from here? I can, I can. No, bear, bear, leave me alone. Go away. Oh god, he's angry. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go to the slums. No ambushes. Awesome. Let's first rest because my entire party is gonna get fatigued very soon. And after that we're gonna go and explore the planet sphere. Which is a very, very dangerous place, by the way. But also a very cool one. Come here, Bernard. Yeah, Palpatine. I got some cheap beer for ya. Okay, let, uh, actually. Let's do our usual buffing. You can also cast this. Okay. I gotta stop dipping into me own aim. Now we can rest and let us go. Now the reason why I kept Valigar's blade and Valigar's armor in my inventory is because I am so unsure um, if use any item that's an HLA Jan eventually will get, will allow me to use those items. It makes sense that it does, because it says use any item, but sometimes that's not really the case. So I'm not completely sure, but I'm gonna keep it in the bag of holding until I can actually confirm it. Hello, peasant. And voila! Valigar's body dissolves as the door to the planar sphere opens before you. So without Valigar's body, or Valigar as a companion, the door will never open to you. So that's why we need him. This is a, a pretty cool place, pretty unique. This is the exit. Okay. Order 66. Okay, gu guys, guys, don't get confused. Don't get. Co okay, let's just teleport them over here. Okay. And now it's time yes, to yes. check for traps because this 
I'm not. I don't really remember what kind of traps there are in here. Or them. Check it out. Okay. Oh, hello. A clay golem. Now, clay golems are very particular enemies, as they are. Now, I, what was the better one? I think this is the best one. Oh, okay. That's fine. Clay golems are only... Um, not Weak is not really the word I'm looking for. Vulnerable to, let's say. They're only vulnerable to crushing weapons. And they are also immune to magical damage. So the only way to actually damage them is by using some sort of crushing weapon, which Corrigan has as a backup, and Herdalese also has a crushing weapon. But for now, I think Corrigan is going to be enough. Hello, senor. Come here. Oh, come on, Corrigan. Don't, don't roll a one. May our deeds be sung for the ages! Boy. Yeah. Okay, so as you can see over here, Clay Golem was immune to my damage because this was a, an attack with the offhand. The offhand obviously is a slashing weapon, so no damage is dealt. This is one of those kinds of enemies that if you don't really know what you're up against, can give you a lot of headaches. But in this case, I studied my golems <laughs> after suffering with them in my first playthroughs, and still I don't remember all of them. What kind of immunities they have, what kind of weaknesses they have. But you learn. Through time and experience. And frustration. Okay, so no traps apparently. It's treason. Yes, yes it is, Palpatine. Oh, I don't actually want this. But... Man, if I ever pick up Mezzi, I'm gonna be sad that I don't have any good arrows, but... Oh well. Okay, so here we have a golem arm. This is a long iron arm. It is useless without a body. Well, oh, thank you. We also have the planner key. This thin bar vibrates softly in your hand. It looks as if it could be used as either a key or a lever. Take it. This is breach. Always a useful scroll to have. Let's keep it over here. Um, sometime in the near future I should organize my scroll cases. Probably uh, not in a video, just so you guys don't suffer through me picking items and stuff. But like having one container full of, let's say, useful backup scrolls, stuff like Breach, stuff like Vocalize. Um, Stuff that you don't really use that often, but can be uh, make or break in certain situations. And I don't want to have to sift through all of the scroll cases to find them. So I'm thinking about just placing them in one single case. And the rest of the spells go into the other ones. Oh, actually, I forgot this. This is why I'm... I sometimes forget this stuff. Okay, so identify this, put it there. Identify this and put it there. Okay, we can actually keep these things. Okay, so golem arm, planner key, off you go. Polymorph other. Put them over there. And here we have a pile of coal. Conjure lesser air elemental and minor spell turn. <clears throat> Not that good of scrolls, but useful. Okay, bullets plus two, I can give these to you. <laughs> Let's put these here. Let's continue exploring this very unique place that is the planar sphere. It shall be done with skill and care. Can you open this? I can. I'll do as you wish. Hmm. Oh, hello. 
just some effort. Just a method apparently. Oh, you bitchy. Okay, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> so be it. Okay, so what do we have here? This looks like a map of the slums. This pool shows a bird's eye view of Atkatla. The planar sphere stands out like a magic beacon in the heart of the city. Okay, so this is actually Atkatla? It kind of looks like just the slums, doesn't it? Okay, so we have a bird's eye view. In my mind, I'll just call this a map. <laughs> but sure. Be quick with I. The dwarf will not do it. Oh. Okay, so I inserted the key or the lever, and let's see. You insert the key, uh, the lever, and proceed to pull it. The lights went out for a few moments, then the ship rumbled. You have initiated planar travel. This is something that's being told to us by this control panel. The inner door will now open. You may not leave the sphere until the master allows it. Well, this doesn't sound good, does it? So we can no longer leave. Order 66. Yep, there is no option to leave the sphere. So we're kind of committed. This changed. We're kind of committed to solving this planar sphere mystery before we can go back into Faerun. Within the ripples of the magical pool, you see a distorted demonic valley. A place such as this could only be home to the most foul of beasts. Ah, oh, wonderful, yes. So the map changed. And maybe that means that we've left Atkatla and came into this demonic plane. Wonderful. Okay, friendly people, so let's send our most charismatic Sith Lord to engage in pleasant conversation. Onvo, Reina and Ankan. Hello. You are welcome in my sight. Stranger. Identify yourself before you come any closer. Palpatine. It appears that I am as trapped as you and your companions. Trapped indeed. I am Reyna. I and my fellow Knights of Solamnia, Onvo and Ankan, have been imprisoned in this strange du dungeon for a long time. Knights of Solamnia. We are the Knights of Honor and Good upon Ancelon, a world so far removed from this one. Interesting. <laughs> Are there any traps up ahead that I should be wary of? Traps? No, but in the dark rooms of this place I have witnessed horrors. These terrors I am loath to discuss, but if it helps your cause, then I shall. When, I, when we first arrived here, my fellow knights and I thought to explore our new surroundings. I wish we hadn't. To the west, we were ambushed by small creatures, children in size but not in appetite. We were hard-pressed to battle our way out of the trap. Perhaps they were halflings? Halflings? Do halflings seek to, seek to rip and rend the flesh from your body? To swallow your flesh and suck the marrow from your bones? If so, then halflings they may be. This doesn't sound like halflings. You must be careful if you encounter them. They are crafty and a worthy foe of any knight. Fare thee well. Okay, so we didn't get a lot of information from this. Reina character here. Ooh, nice, nice spell. So we have Keldon's Warding Whip. Kelban, okay. I usually get this wrong. This is an abjuration spell that lasts for three rounds. And when this spell is cast, it dispels one spell protection of up to eighth level affecting the target creature. Every round thereafter, till the duration of the spell expires, another spell protection will be removed from the target. Cool. So this is a spell that removes stuff like minor spell turning, minor glove of invulnerability, spell immunity, glove of invulnerability, minor spell deflection, spell turning, spell deflection, and spell shield. This will always remove the highest level spell protection. No, 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 no. Magic resistance does not affect this spell. Okay. So it's a cool spell, but <clears throat> not that sure if I'm gonna be using it a lot. But this is definitely something to give to Mr. Edwin here. How are your levels? Eh, 
actually, you could take one. I I'm still trying to play around with this power word stun. I gotta remember to use this. <laughs> I always forget it. Okay, so do you have anything to say? Is this place not frightening but wondrous at the same time? By my oath, I have never been to such an interesting domain. Excuse my rudeness, I am Onvo, Knight of the Sword. We are far from my homeland, trapped here much as you, I suspect. Of the wonders you have seen, what was most what has most bewitched you? Past the bone room. Interesting. You will find a chamber full of magical equipment. Ooh. There is one large tube holding a damaged golem that is missing its head and arm. We have an arm. Whoever sought to repair it was interrupted in his work. That magician's study reminds me of my brother Alex's room, back when he studied to become a wizard. That room, so alien yet so familiar, stirred me the most. That said, there was a presence there that, that worried me. I did not scout further than that room. Hmm, that sounds interesting. Perhaps I might explore that way. Fare thee well. Okay, Ancon. Good day to you. Strangers, be wary. This twisted hell shows no mercy to the weak of spirit. I am Ancon, Knight of the Rose. Do not worry about my spirit. I am more than capable of handling whatever dangers may be held within these walls. Your bravery is commendable, but the wiser man often lives long past his more foolhardy comrades. May I offer you a little advice? <laughs> I always welcome advice. Directly north, you will find a room. Within its walls is an oceanic nightmare. Fish that walk as men live here. Be wary if you walk that way. What the hell? Anything else? Wisdom I hold much of, but I suspect you would rather not sit here for hours listening to my lectures. You are young and have an adventurous fire in your veins. You are not yet ready for true wisdom. <laughs> Screw you then, bitch. So I wanted to learn from you. He does not care about me. That's evil. <clears throat> okay, so let's do some buffs here because I don't really like the idea of child-sized enemies wanting to rip out my flesh. <laughs> so let's buff up a little bit. Okay, let, let's see what we can find here. Corgan, as always. They are halflings. What the hell? Okay, so just halfling warriors? I may regret saying just, but we'll see. Okay, they don't seem to be of any particular danger. Have some tiny potions and some normal weaponry. No mercy for those who oppose us! Okay, so only warriors as well. Let's kill these. The Whoa. A bloodied, half a bloodied halfling sits chewing on a human leg bone still partially covered by dirt leather armor. Oh god. It looks up, smiles and says, Mort Feast. Well, I don't like you. Okay, so he went, he went back. I do not like that because it looks like he's getting reinforcements. Um so you sound like let's not go too unprepared here. Okay, we're hasted. You too, check it out. Togan. Whoa ho ho ho, what the hell is going on here? Okay. So we have Kayardi, which is apparently a wizard. Wait. Okay, so they're all... No, they're not all named. We have Togan, Into. This looks like a thief. This looks like a warrior. Mogadish. Two warriors, those are irre irrelevant. And this Kayardi fellow has mirror image, shadow door, minor globe, spell turning. Protection from normal missiles, protection from cold, stone skin, and mind blank. And this Intu fella has already cast domination on Corgan. No, 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 no. I do not care okay, so you... 
Uh, I could actually use Herd Elise to try and remove magic here. This could be useful. Vaconia, um, you are just gonna stand back, I believe. I wish I had given chaotic commands to myself. Well, better late than never. Okay. What? Have you and you three kind of just yes. come over here. What should I fetch now? Okay, so Corgan is berserking. Let's go murder some people here. Okay, wait, so he's a beast. Mogadish has Blade Barrier, Entropy Shield, Armor of Fate, Spiritual Hammer, Physical Mirror, Shield of the Archons, and Free Action. So we will not really be able to breach him unless we first get rid of Shield of the Archons and Entropy Shield as well. Mm, not sure I'm gonna go to all that work. And the wizard is over here. Yeah, I don't really appreciate the wizard being here. Let's try and, and get him yes. out of invisibility. Oh, right. Okay, so there I have chaotic commands. Herdalis has cast his remove I magic. Okay, somebody leveled up. Who did we even kill? We killed Togan? Okay, he got kind of murdered by by Corgan, I believe. Yeah, and also some minute meteors. Okay, so let's continue on. Okay, so this guy is revealed. Kayardi is the guy we saw before, right? Ah, but now he has more stuff. Okay, so Kayardi also has spell shield. Oh no, never mind, I didn't see him before. Never mind. Mirror Image, Shadow Door, Minor Globe, Spell Turning, Mind Blank. Oh, we did see him, okay, this is the one. So he has Mind Blank, Spell Turning, he has Mantle, which means I will not be able to hit him with my Warriors. And he also has Spell Shield. So I have to break through two Spell Protections and then I'll be able to breach him. Okay, so let's let's see how we can deal with this. <clears throat> I have one secret word on Edwin. I have nothing on myself, correct? Correct. Okay, this guy got completely dispelled, which is awesome. You go for that one. Herdalise, you can kill that one. Vicky. You can create some chaos over there. You need my skills, I see. And you also have a secret word. Okay, wonderful. So, secret oh, word. Secret word. And then Fate we'll be able to breach the guy. Okay. I'm just gonna move away from here because we are too clumped up. And the remove magic is gonna be annoying. Hey, Not that bad, but annoying. Well, we have an aerial uh, servant. Okay, so shoot that guy. Okay, one spell shield. Um, one secret word went out. Shoot that one. You go for that one. That one's dead. Why am I in melee? Because reasons, of course. He's casting something at me. Yes, he is. Can we get out of here? Oh, he's casting Breach. Okay, so let's get out. Okay, second secret word went out. He should be breachable. And he will die a very painful death. He's casting... Okay. No more protection for you, my friend. What is this, by the way? If it's a teleport uh, field, it's fine. If it's a chaos, something, something, name I can't remember, it's not fine. Okay. 
teleport field, so it's fine, okay. Cast your teleport field, my friend. I could not care less. We still have an, another aerial servant, but I want everybody to focus on this guy. Edwin, where are you? No, get back here. Dead. Okay. But yeah, Herr Delise's um, remove magic was quite good there. Because he completely dispelled the priest. Which could be annoying. Okay, so you don't really need a full heal, so just take that. I can heal her, please. An Edwin leveled up. Wonderful. Whoops. Okay, my friend. So am I also close to leveling up? I am close to leveling up. Well, kind of close. Okay, 40k. Almost. Almost. Okay, so Herdelis, Jan, and myself. Well, Herdelis and Jan are close. I am close-ish. Okay, so Mr. Edwin. He gained an additional level 4 and level 5 spell slots, hit point, and lore. Okay, not that big of a level up, but still good. It's always nice to have secret words, because when we meet these enemies, they can get annoying. Let's take a greater Malison, just in case. <clears throat> As for level 5, I think I'm going to take a second spell shield to protect ourselves in case we find some more evil spellcasters. Nah. I forgot once again to use the power word stun. I swear the next enemy I see is gonna get power word stunned. Just to see what happens. If it's a wizard, if it's a warrior, I won't bother. Because this is... 90 or more hit points unaffected. But yeah, it should affect mages and sorcerers. Come on, teleport field. It's not like I really need to wait for it, but <clears throat> you know. This sparrow is ready to fly. Okay, so oh, cool. Do it. So what do we have here? We have a longbow, we have some gloves, more coal. Hill Giant String, Potion, Potion. Let's put this here, let's put this here. Hands of Tekok. Gauntlets of Ogre Power. Nice! So this is an item I very much love in Baldur's Gate 1. It completely negates the weakness of certain characters, such as Vaconia, for instance. Well doesn't completely negate, but it allows her to equip a lot of items she would not be able to otherwise. So the hands of Tekok are exactly that, his very hands. He lost them when he attacked a strange man crossing the spine of the world. The mysterious man turned out to be a mage of incredible power, and he used Tekok's hands to create this pair of ogre skin gauntlets. And it just sets your strength ability score to 18100. So, Miss Vaconia doesn't have <clears throat> any gloves, but she has this Moller's arm, which pretty much does the same thing. The one annoying thing about this Moller's arm, however, is I cannot really use my sling, because then she would not be able to use her, her armor. Now, <clears throat> you could do the cheesy thing and just keep it equipped, but it's also very heavy and she will not be able to actually move. So, <clears throat> giving her the gauntlets, it's going to improve her taco, it's going to improve her damage, it's going to improve her carrying capacity, and it's going to allow her to equip a lot of things she wouldn't otherwise be able to. <clears throat> so, a very nice item to have. Let me also put this on, <laughs> on Corgan. Nah, <clears throat> just keep it here. Okay. It's treason. Okay, so a nice item to pick up there. Okay, a lot of spiders. 
Spiders aren't, aren't problematic at all. I got scared by my own skeleton. Wonderful. <laughs> okay, cool. This looks like a room that can be trapped. Okay, so we're exploring this area. Supposedly to the north here there are fish people. No traps? Wait. This is the sound of a summon. I don't like it. <laughs> okay, more coal. Am I picking up darts? I am picking up darts. Okay, so give me this. Oh, and I forgot to check out the, um, the bow. So this is a Ripper plus two. This composite longbow was one of the many, one of many made by a half-elven craftsman whose name has been lost to history. At one time there were several hundred in use, a favorite of scouts who patrolled the Anarok Desert, but many have been lost or destroyed. Only a few are still known to exist, and they still and they see little use due to the tremendous strength they require. So it's not that special, honestly. It's just a plus three tackle, plus two damage. Composite longbow. Nothing particularly fancy about it. So be it. Now that summon sound could mean trouble. This appears to be a control panel relating to the creation of an iron golem. A partially completed golem stands lifeless in a tube above the panel. The golem is missing an arm and a head. Okay, but we have an arm. The golem arm that you have brought has been attached to this monster. What Wonderful. Do you want, no, you know, this reminds me of that time. Let's see if there are any, any traps in this area. Then we can move north or east. Okay. Is it locked? No. Whoa! Okay, so more halfling wizards. Because we have Necre, which clearly is a mage. Minor globe, minor spell turning, shield and stone skin. Protected by mantle. <clears throat> let's let's get back over here first. You guys can come. That's fine. Okay, let's close the door. <laughs> I don't want to take this fight unprepared. I don't know what kind of wizardry is going to happen over there. Okay, so my summon can also come help. Vaconia. Castle remove fear just in case. <clears throat> Jan, you are fine. Everybody else is fine. We have stone skins. Okay, we should be fine. We're hasted. Okay, so we have two wizards. Remove magic. I don't like fighting in narrow corridors, but let's send Corgan up ahead. And let's help Corgan out here. You shoot from over there, you get back, Edwin, you are fine. Okay. Go for that one. You go for this one. Now, what else do we have? So, Necre, the guy we saw earlier. Minor Globe, Minor Spell Turning, Shield, Stone Skin, Mantle. So, he is invulnerable to magical weapons. I should, I should pick up some normal weapons. Because, as silly as it may seem, them being protected by protection from magical weapons doesn't really save them against normal weapons. So I should have a couple. Okay, so we have remove fear on myself. And then this second mage. Tybella. Mirror image, shadow door, minor globe, minor spell turning, stone skin. And this guy is a, a spell sequencer of minor spell deflection and fire shield. Okay. 
So not that dangerous, but I cannot really breach him. Th this lady... I can breach. I don't think minor spell turning protects against breach. Okay, so this is Necre. So let's try and, and breach Necre. You, need my skills, I see. you can breach. No, no. Never mind, I'm dumb. I need to breach Tybella. Which I cannot no longer see. He's invisible. Okay. Protected from magical weapons. Okay, so Jan. Come over here. Oh, never mind. <laughs> they got dispelled by Mr. Herr the Lees. Good job. Friend, oh, she went invisible. You Lovely. I will not wait for her to come back up. Killer. Man, I love how dispel magic, or in this case, remove magic, can be so awesomely powerful. If it hits. A lot of times it doesn't really hit. But in this case, since Mr. Herdelis here is a bard, he gains levels very fast, and he can actually hit some remove magics. Which is wonderful. We have a dagger. Stiletto of De Marches, or De Marques, plus two. Most who take up the trade of murder for hire do so for reasons other than personal pleasure. But not so the Lady De Marc, De March. She took special pleasure in the torture of her targets, which is why she made this dagger. With but one touch of its polished blade, an opponent was rendered immobile, incapable of so much as screaming, yet the victim could watch and feel all that happened to them. While her opponent was thus held, the lady could slowly bleed them, sometimes taking several hours before allowing her subject to succumb to the final agony of death. Such a wonderful lady. The lady finally fell victim to her own evil. Disarmed by a rival and struck by her own stiletto, her fate was soon sealed. Nice. So, it's a simple plus two dagger, and it has a 20% chance per hit that the target must save versus death, or be held for two rounds. I mean, I can't really say that it's good, but if it were more than this, maybe it could be overpowered? I doubt it, because allowing a save doesn't really do much, honestly. Okay. What else have we got here? A skeleton warrior. Oh, hello! Oh, okay, so they were level... Um, Low-level mages, I think. Corgan? Traps? Anything? I think we make a fine partnership. Like Drist no. and Elminster and Ah, this reminds me. Wait, I improve hasted myself Except instead of Well done. Well done me. Nobody move. Okay, this was trapped. Oh, and we can interact with this. These look like furnaces and... Ah, okay. So this is probably why we have these piles of coal to put into the furnaces. I think I have another one here. Yes, I do. Okay. So we have three piles of coal for three furnaces. Cool. And I think I'm going to end the episode here. Because I don't know what's going to happen once I activate these. And I don't want to let the episode go on a lot longer so for now we're gonna call it in this place and we'll have this area to explore and interact with with the next one in the next episode and then also proceed to exploring the rest of the planner sphere we know there are supposedly some fish people over here we know that apparently we're in some sort of demonic plane and we also have three knights which we can probably help Okay, so yeah, as always guys, I want to thank everyone for watching, for being here in the channel, watching some Baldur's Gate with me. If you have any thoughts, any questions about the game, if you want to share your own experience with the Planner Sphere, I know that for me, the first time I came here, it was a very special place, let's say. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, leave a comment. If you want to get notified about future videos coming to the channel, feel free to subscribe, and I hope to see you all in the next episode. Until then, stay safe everyone.